Hello, Bitbucket here. I'm going to do something a little different today. Usually I'm playing a video game, uh, but this time I'm going to talk about using a program called Blender, which was originally designed to do uh, 3D modeling, animation, and compositing, but I'm not going to use it for that. I'm going to use it as a video editor. I really like it. I've tried several other packages, and this one just makes sense to me. It's easy to use. It has all of the features that I'm used to having in a professional grade package, and it's free. I'm just going to click to get rid of the uh, splash screen there, and then I'm, I'm going to go back to factory settings just to show you how I, I get things set up. I'd like to thank Paul over at the Process Diary for his tutorial on editing with Blender. He's got some great videos over there. You should go check him out. I loved his window layout that he used, so I'm going to show you how to set that up because it's just uh, worlds better than the default. The first thing I'm going to do is to switch Blender to video editing mode, and this will rearrange the windows on the screen for us. This is better than the default uh, 3D modeling view. Uh, however, I'm going to change a few things around. First thing I'm going to do is add a new window layout, and I'm going to rename it. Video editing bit bucket. And what this will allow us to do is to come back to this window layout at any time. We can go back and uh, do some 3D modeling if we choose to. Uh, and then when we're done with that, jump into video editing. Now this window is a properties view, uh, excuse me, it's a graph editor. I don't use that very often, so the first thing I'm going to do is make this a file browser window. I really hate the bin abstraction that most video editing software uses. Uh, I just I like to deal with the file system. Show me my file system, and uh, I will edit videos. So, see over here we've got the, the drives in the computer, some system bookmarks. I've got a custom bookmarks area here. If you want to add bookmarks, you just browse to the area you're interested in bookmarking and click Add, and it will add a bookmark there. I don't generally use this pane. Uh, I just navigate uh, with this window here. So I'm going to drag this bar to the left to get rid of that. If I ever decide I want it back, I just have to grab this little plus sign here and drag it over, and there it is. So we'll hide that, pull this on over. This is going to be our preview window where our video is displayed. Uh, I might leave these buttons visible here because this will allow us to change how the information is displayed and I really like having the time and date here and the uh, file size. Um, okay, I'm going to split this window, uh, this preview window, and add another window on the right here. And by default it adds a second preview window, but we can change that type just by clicking here and choosing a different window type. Over here, I'm going to choose the Properties window. And this is going to be our Render Properties. I mainly deal in uh, 720p, so I'm going to change this to HDTV 720p. If you use 1080p, you would choose that there. Scrolling down, the frame rate I usually use is 30 frames per second. I'm dealing with screen recordings and uh, that's the uh, setting I have uh, set up in Fraps or DX3, whichever. I use both from time to time. Scroll down a little bit more. Is it uh, shading, I believe? Yes. I'm going to turn off ray tracing, shadows, and subsurface scatter. I don't know if this affects the video sequence editor rendering or not. From what I've read about improving Blender performance, it's best to turn those three options off. I haven't done any extensive testing to find out if that actually um, affects render times. I'm going to set the output folder to a global uh, rendering folder. This is by default where uh, any video renders are going to go. I have a global output folder there. Usually I change that on a per project basis to point inside my project folder so that I can keep all of my uh, project files together. 
Okay, and then for the uh, output format, I'm going to choose uh, MPEG. This tells it to use the FFmpeg uh, encoding library, uh, which will give us uh, a bunch of different formats to choose from. Presets, H.264. I'm going to change this to a QuickTime format and leave the codec at H.264. I've had the best results with a QuickTime format, uh, and this is also compatible with uh, the Handbrake video encoder, which I use for my final renders uh, before shipping them off to YouTube. Uh, I'm going to increase the bitrate to about 9,000, and the GOP, change that to 15. That's going to be half the frame rate just to maintain great quality. Minimum is fine. Maximum, I'm going to change that to 12,000. Uh, and then leave that uh, buffer as, uh, as default. Now this 9,000 and 12,000, this should be sufficient, not only for 720p, but for 1080p as well. Now the QuickTime file format does include audio, so I'm going to change that to PCM audio. That will give us an uncompressed audio stream, which will give us the highest quality in our output. Uh, now, this window here is the timeline, and you'll see down below I have a another timeline. And I, I'm just moving the this marker here by left-clicking and dragging, and I can scrub around my video and watch it update here. I don't like the way these two windows are arranged. I prefer the, to have them reversed. Uh, this timeline window I generally don't use except for these items down here. Uh, the start, the end, and the playback controls. So I'm going to swap them and put these playback controls right up here underneath the preview window where they'll be uh, more handy. So I'm going to change this window here to the timeline and this one here to the video sequence editor. And then I'm going to use my mouse to resize this window, no, nope, this window here. Just drag that up. Bam. I am, I'm going to do one more thing. I'm just going to grab this. Drag it down just a touch. There we go. Just gives a little more space up here. Okay. This is generally how I like my windows laid out. There are a few more things we need to change. Uh, one of them is here in the playback menu. I'm going to turn on audio scrubbing and AV sync. What this is going to do is this is going to make sure that our audio and video stay synchronized as we're previewing them during our editing. The audio scrubbing means uh, as we click and drag and move this around we'll hear the audio playback as well as see the picture change and that's pretty handy. Alright, a few last things in the user preferences. Uh, go to the interface tab and you'll see as I point around at different items, it's going to bring up a tooltip to tell me what that item does or what it's for. Now there's two pieces of information there. One is just a textual piece of information. In plain English, tells you exactly what that does. The second item is kind of in a darker uh, color font. Uh, it says Python, and then it gives you a Python reference. That's for using that item in Python scripting. I don't do any Python scripting, so I'm just going to turn that information off just to give me a little bit cleaner interface and uh, prevent information overload. As you'll see as I point back here, that Python information is gone. I'm going to keep playback uh, FPS on as I'm playing back my video right up here in this corner. It's going to show the frames per second that I'm actually getting in my preview. Okay, moving on to editing. I don't change anything here. Input. I am going to make one change here. I'm used to using the, the space bar to start and stop playback. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for the play animation option. And you'll see by default it's uh, assigned to Alt A. What I'm going to do is just click here and then click again and then press the space bar. Now that will assign that action to the space bar. Add-ons, I don't change anything there. Themes, nothing there. File, I am going to change the render output to my global render directory. 
and that will make sure any new projects that I start will automatically put uh, renders there. Okay, moving on to the system tab. Let's see, right down here, I do have a, a GeForce video card, which has a CUDA support, so I will enable that to use that video card for rendering. I don't know if that affects the video sequence editor or if it's just for 3D rendering, but it doesn't hurt to have it on. Scroll down here to the prefetch frames. I'm going to change that to 30, and that means that when I press the spacebar to play back my video, Blender is going to pre-render 30 frames before it starts playback. And that just helps to smooth out my preview playback and prevent frame dropping. Memory cache limit. I have 8 gigabytes in this machine, so I'm going to change this to uh, 6. Bring up my calculator here real quick. One thousand twenty four times six is sixty one forty four. Sixty one whoop sixty one forty four megabytes will give me six gigabytes of uh, memory dedicated to Blender. Okay. And that's uh, how I set up my user settings. So I'm gonna save user settings and exit. One last thing to do up here at the render buttons. I'm going to change this image editor to keep UI. What this will do is it will prevent Blender from displaying each frame as it's rendered. That will just speed up the rendering process. And if I click this lock here, it will lock the user interface and dedicate more memory uh, to the renderer, which will also speed up the process. That means once I start a render, if I click around here to change tabs, it won't do anything. It will just stay right here and render as fast as it possibly can, which is great. That's exactly what I want. Okay, set my uh, cursor back to zero just by clicking and dragging. Now, if I want Blender to start up this way from now on, every time I open Blender, I'll go up here to File, Save Startup File. Yes, save startup file. Now, anytime I open Blender, it will come right to my editing screen, set up exactly the way I want it, and I can just jump in uh, editing a new, a new program. Well, that's it for setting up Blender. I hope you'll join me for the next episode when I actually get into uh, editing a, uh, a video program. Thanks for watching, and see you soon.